you want to make this kind of animation well this tutorial is gonna be for you and it's a easy one so stopping with all this intro bullshit let's start with it first we have to add a plane in our scene next what we have to do is go into the edit mode by pressing the tab and right click and subdivide it and we have to do this four more times so two three four and five that the faces are selected make sure pressing 3 to face select and go to faces and click on poke faces. We did this because we are first making the data path animation. For that we need the edges to be going diagonally as well. So that the data can travel in a diagonal way as well so that it can make a similar part like this. Now before we go ahead and start with making the effect, we have to select the vertices from where the data will start traveling from so for example i'll select these vertices then i will go to this vertex group right here and then click on create a new one and i will name this as start click on assign to assign it all now we have to just select vertices where these edge path will go towards i'll select just like this and i can select some around the areas as well just create a new one which will be named as end and click assign after we are done with the data collection or the data assigning we can head to the geometry node editor to start with we have to convert these edges to a curve for that we can use our edge path to curves and it will simply do nothing because we have to assign it some start vertices and end vertices for that we have already the data so we'll drag this out so we can select a node called named attribute and here we can select our data type so it is a float type and we can select our start point here now but it is not finished yet we have yet to assign some more data which will the end point but we don't have the access to it we can access it by dragging this out and searching a shortest edge path this will select the end vertex for you. You can just duplicate the named attribute and connect it right here and change it to the end. And we are getting some bizarre result because what we actually have to do is just invert this around. It works just like how the end is the beginning in the movie. It is also same here. Make this look not so straight. We want them to be a little g So for that we'll use a noise texture and connect it to the edge cost and if we crank up this scale you can see something going on let's convert these curves into a mesh that will be using a curve to mesh dirt and for the curve profile we can use curve circle and connect it to the profile curve now they look so big we can reduce down the radius something around 0.0, .0 zero five should do for now also reduce the resolution because we don't want that much of a resolution five should be enough if you are not satisfied with your result you can go and manually assign each vertices so that you get a satisfying result for yourself we are not done yet if you look closely at this curve there are some ugly bends just like this one so how can we fix this for that Let's use subdivision subsurface node in this and after that it doesn't look like a circuit now. Can fix that as well. For that we will use subdivide curve. Just put it before our curve to mesh and we can see the result is way better now. We can crank it up to get it more sharper. Now that we have this circuit we only need is the uv data so that we can apply those texture and animated texture stuff on it for that we have to store some data first data we have to store is this curve circle <clears throat> we'll use capture attribute and plug it just between these two and for the data that we have to capture is the length of the spline so that we have a spline parameter which will give the length of this spline and we can store it now the same way we have to do is this curves as well so we'll use another capture attribute plug it right here use the same spline parameter and plug it right here so we get the x which will be this one and the y's which will be this one and then combining these we can create the uv data so we'll use store named attribute for that and we'll name our attribute uv but we have to set it to vector because our uv is going to be a vector 
by the way i'm using blender version 4.2 it is out and you can use it too as well we have to combine our u and v's this one will be the x so plug this into the x this is the curve which is making it up and the y's will be the y length of this one so this is the y length which is the curve and connected to the y now these are combined and we can connect it to the value node and we can st we are storing it as uv now if you would love to animate it as well so for that we can do is just because our curve to mesh we can use a not call trim curve this you can animate your curves just like that change it to length to get different kind of result so that they start at a random point depending upon their length of course let's head to the shader editor selecting this and go to the material tab create a new one and let's name it data underscore fx now we have to assign this as well to the geometry node editor unless it will not work so add set material and in here we can collect click our data fx now we can peacefully work with our data fx now we don't need the principal bsdf we have to apply two kind of data to our circuit the first one being will be the glass which will be this glass bsdf and second we need a emission bsdf which will be the light data traveling through we have to connect these two using a mixture so i will press ctrl shift and right click to drag it so that we can combine them using a mix shader that is a shortcut and connect it to the surface like that well also let's switch to a uh, render preview how it looks using this factor right here it will determine how much which part will be our glass and which part of our it will be a uh, data traveling for that we'll use a Voronoi texture to determine and we'll use the distance and connect it to the here as of now we can't see anything properly so i'll click on Control shift and left click on this so that we can visualize it separately so we can see something but let's just make it more sharper using a color ramp as you can see i am moving this towards each other the black part is more visible now it is more sharper now let's just connect back our color ramp to the factor of the mix shader and then connect the mix shader to the surface after that what we have to do is bring in the uv that we created in our geometry node editor so how we can do is just drag this vector out and type in attribute and i will select this color one we don't want the color we want the vector because uv is a vector go here Control c and here and Control v this mapping still doesn't look right we'll use a mapping in between and just plug it right here reduce the x value to zero let's have a proper look at it by just viewing the color ramp now it looks like this we can scale it up by scaling this thing right here we can get more for now currently they are just randomized so we can reduce down this randomize and now they are no proper like a data set the scale as per your liking because when you are going to move them they will move properly to make this data move we can change around the y value so it will start moving but we want it to automatically start moving so we can use an expression hash frame and divided by 24 and press enter now it should start moving and it's quite fast you can increase the number here for example 44 and it will go even slower now with that we can just come back and come this to the final output and we are done with our first step which is making the data travel it feels really empty without any chip processor or any other components so we need to add those as well first of all we'll add another plane in our scene and that plane will be subdivided again six times and now let's also import the assets which we will be using to make this circuit complete what i will do is just go to the file and click on append so i'll click on this asset blend file it contains all the assets that i'm going to use right now the link is in the description you can download it for free now if we select that blend file we can get this all this option let's collect this collection and then collect both of these tools and click append it wait for it to load and here we are we have the assets in our scene first thing is we have to adjust our circuit which is like not matching with the processor so i can scale it down to make it match it so now there are two assets folder inside here the asset one folder containing all the small things let me select them for you so it contains all these small assets that we will be using and then the asset 2 folder contains this large chip and that co electrical component now after we have this processor and this asset which is a single asset only in the scene 
so what we want is to not have any other components around this so what we can do is go again go into edit mode and make sure we select these vertices again and again we will create another vertex group which will be named as x what we'll do is press ctrl i so we select only the outer ones and then we'll select it and click on assign now to distribute these small electrical components which are in the assets one folder what we gotta do is selecting our plane we will create another new geometry node but before we start with any nodes let's set up our scene a little bit so we can have a proper look add a camera to my scene and that's the camera using an add-on called blender kit so i can easily find some hdri so i want to search something like a studio and i will click on this one to add a studio hdri i've also added a single light in our scene now to have all those components on our plane jump into the geometry node editor we want to distribute points on faces like that but we also want the original geometry as well so we'll use the join geometry and bring that the original geometry as well now to convert these points to instances i mean to those electrical components we can use a node called instance on points and for the points we want our collection which is here right here we can drag our asset 001 into here and set it and connect it to the instances wait my light is also in there that is really bugging it out one issue we are having is that they are stacking each other what we have to do is we search for random value and then we can just change it to boolean and connect it in here but the second thing would be the main thing is to click connect this to the pick instances and if we click on separate children and uh, that will do it but for now they are looking very small so i will just scale them up all the density of the points are very low so let's crank it up to 100 and we can see them more some components which are going in to our processor and into our other components for that we can bring in the vertex data group that we created so we'll drag out the selection click named attribute change it to float and select our x that we created outside now these thing will not spawn around our processor board should be black and it is right here so we'll set a material for the board for now we'll use the blender kit and search for circuit nowadays the board colors are mainly black so what i would like to do is use a black color i'll select the material that i just used and now it is looking better we are going to find unit bit more later don't worry about it but you might see some issues where they might be overlapping with each other as you can see just right here they are overlapping so what we can do to fix that is change the method to poison disk and for the distance i will set to 0 0.01 for now that won't affect and we have to again increase the density max go out and this board is kind of way big right now so i will just delete the extras we are missing a lot of details out so let's set it up one by one the first thing that i want to make a proper is let's add another lights to our scene so i'll add another light and i would like to rotate them at this angle so i want two light leaking into our scene from two angles one from here and duplicate it again and one from right there why I pushed two lights on the left and right because I want the edges of this processor to shine really nicely. Also I will zoom out a little bit and go to the camera data properties and change the focal length to 80mm. That way it will look even better. We can play with the depth of field so select the camera, go to the Tupac camera properties and here we click on the depth of field. Now we will select our processor as the center object and we have to also change around with the f stop so I will set it to 0.5 for now and this data color it was good at white only. Next thing that I can do is uh, I will reduce the size of this top light and also I will reduce the spread of this one until it only shines our processor part a lot. Also make sure it's at the exact top of our processor like that I will scale it down even more until and unless it highlights our processor a lot I will increase the spread and I will just reduce the power as well sometimes the scene might not look that great so what we can basically do is head back to geometer node editor 
and try changing the seed of the distribute points on faces to get our desired angle or desired result that we can use so i like this one because there are so many small chips around our picture and i really like this one to get more out of it what we can do is go to the let's just get a single render done for us right now let's use it here with the use nodes now what we can simply do is use a clear node and to see the result control shift left click on this and we get the result in the background this is the result we are getting we can change it to bloom that would be better but it's too much let's reduce down the threshold so for this one i think i'm gonna go for the streaks one it looks really cool for now and that would be it for this tutorial if you want the full animation file for this one you can go to the link in the description you can download it from there but this animation file will not be for free you will have to pay for it thank you guys for watching this really nice tutorial that i made and have a blessed day see you in the next one